Hello, my name is Kelsey, and today we're going to talk about probability and statistics 6.10. Through this section, it, the student is expected to select and use an appropriate representation for presenting and graphing different graphical representations of the same data. Through this, you can do it through a line plot, a stem and leaf plot, a line graph, and a bar graph. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a bar graph. With a bar graph, some common key points to know is that this is drawn using rectangular bars. The bars can either be going vertical, which is going to be up and down, or they can be rotated to go horizontal from left to right. Now with a bar graph, some common features on every single bar graph are going to include bars, which are going to show how much, how much the quantity is. We have an axis, which we've previously learned that the x-axis is going to be going horizontal, vertical is going to be your y-axis. We also have to include titles in our graphs. So for this bar graph, the title is going to be, What's Your Favorite Sport? Now as we see over here, we've got the x-axis, which is going to be, Which Sport Was the Student's Favorite? Followed by the y-axis, the number of votes. So the way to graph this bar graph is going to look at first, let's look at volleyball. The number of votes, it says there's five. So on this axis right here, we see that volleyball is going to be first. Now we just want to go up five to show that five is the number of votes. Determined by the scale on the left, we have two, the interval two, four, six, eight, ten. So it's going to go by an interval of two. So for volleyball, we see that it's at 5, we're going to go up 2, 4, and we're going to go up halfway to make 5. Once you hit the 5 at the top, you just want to make that rectangular bar going straight down to show that volleyball is going to be 5 points. Next we see is ba baseball is 6. Baseball, we're going to go up 2, 4, and all the way across here is six. And so we make another bar graph to show that six is the number of votes for basketball. Next we're going to look at soccer, which in soccer the vote is 10. Looks like that was the favorite sport. So we start at Y axis, which is going to be at 10. And if you go all the way across, you know that the bar stops right 10 votes to just have two. Now you may ask why we need to know this. Well this is going to be seen on our star testing. It may show a graph like this and it may want you to interpret, interpret the graph. So let's say we asked which sport was the least favorite. Based on the visual of this graph you can see that the lowest bar is going to equal the lowest number of votes. So in this case, can we guess what it's going to be? Tennis. All right, now so. using the same information, we're going to construct a line graph. A line graph is used to show how things change over time. It can also show the difference between two categories and show which is the maximum, which we've learned as well is going to be the highest, in this case, number of votes, or the minimum, which would be the lowest number of votes. Line graphs, this one we're just going to do a single line graph, so it's going to look somewhere along the lines of one line. Some graphs can also have multiple full line graphs. What you do to start this is that we're going to go ahead and look at our table again here. Make sure we have our title, our labels, our scale, and once that's done, we're going to see again that volleyball has five votes. So what we do is instead of doing our bar graph, we're going to start at volleyball and see that we go up five, and we're just going to plot a single point. Now basketball has six, so let's go six to basketball. Plot a single point. Soccer, ten, and tennis, two. Now once this is done, we are going to collect, connect the dots from left to right. This is always done from left to right starting at the very corner of your X and Y intersect. So moving from left to right, you're going to go first to volleyball. And then 
Some common features are about a line plot are that it has one horizontal line going from left to right. We're going to have our title. In this case, we'll go ahead and label it Mr. Johnson's class. Overall, we want to see what the total number of votes would be. So we have our favorite sports with volleyball, basketball, soccer, and tennis. Now the first thing that you would want to do if you had your information is to go ahead and organize it into a table, which is something that we've already gone ahead and did. So with this table, we see the number of votes per sport. So now let's go ahead and look at free line plot. You're going to use a simple symbol, just an X. So the X is going to plot the number of votes. We can go ahead and label as well. X equals one vote. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at volleyball has five votes. So if we know that one vote is X, you have five X's, it's going to equal five votes. So with volleyball being five votes, we're going to go vertically, which is up and down. We're going to go vertically up five. We see that basketball is six. So with the line plot, we're going to have a few things that we need to learn talk about. So with that, we're going to go ahead and look at some key vocabulary. One word is going to be clusters. Now a cluster is going to be any group of data that is all bundled together. So let's just call it a group. of data. Next, another term is going to be a gap. So a gap, you know, we're just looking for any holes in the graph. Are there any numbers that don't have a plotted x above them? The last is going to be called an outlier. Now if you look at outlier, the key root is out meaning that the plot is outside the rest of the others or not common. So outlier is going to be a plot not by the other points. So on the star test, when you look at your line plot, make sure you have every label as well as the title. You want to have a scale. In this case, we have that X equals one vote. A common question may be to ask, what is, in this case, let's go ahead and say, are there any gaps? Well, we look, and since each plot is pointed, there are going to be no gaps. We could say that we have a cluster right in here from basketball and soccer. Those are the two highest that are going to be grouped together. Now, this is a stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot is going to have a vertical line which in this case, it separates the stem from the leaf. Just like every other graph, we have our title, which is, we're talking about temperature, degrees Fahrenheit, and Dallas. From this information, we're going to take these four points and place them over here into our stem and leaf plot. So now that we have our title and our stem and leaf plot, we're going to talk about the ones and tens places, which I know we've talked about previously. So to, let's go ahead and look at the number 42. To refresh our memory, 42, so in the tens place, we see that there are four tens. So this is essentially four tens plus, we're going to go ahead and look at our ones place, which has two. So if we look at it, we can break this down 
to say four tens plus two ones. With this data, the stem and leaf plot is kind of the same way. The stem is going to be your tens place, whereas the leaf plot is going to be your ones place. Now looking at that, with the number 42, we see that there are four tens and two ones. All that's separating the tens in the ones place is this vertical line, which you need to make sure that you have on your graph. Next, we'll look at the number 63. With 63, it's going to be six tens. And how many ones? It's going to be three ones. So similar to 42, we know that six tens goes under the leaf, the stem, I'm sorry, and the three ones goes under the leaf. Now for our next number, 67, we know that again, this is going to have six tens. So instead of starting another row down here, we're going to keep the six tens, and we know that it's going to be seven ones based on that ones place right here. So we're going to go ahead and just add 7 to the right of 3. So when we read this, it's going to be 63 is one temperature and 67 is another. So just because these are next to each other does not mean that this reads 37 because these are separate numbers. Finally, we have a number 54, which 54 is going to be... Now from a stem and leaf plot, we need to see that idea, the steps that we're doing first, we want to identify the leading values in each term. We want to note the common terms that have the leading tens, which in this case is the six. We also want to know that if there are, we want to go ahead and put them in the right order. So what I should have done is instead of 40s, 60s, 50s, we can go ahead and switch these two to make it read 40, 50, 60 in that correct order. So what we do, just remember that it's going to be this leading term and the following term. So we read it 40 tens plus two ones is going to be 42. Based on this data, we can see where most of the temperature, in this case there's not too much data, but we can see that the majority, the half of them, are going to be in the 60s range. So it's a pretty nice day in Dallas. Next, after we've done this, we want to go ahead and let's go ahead and look at some star examples to see how these graphs might be shown so you're ready for the start. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a sample star practice problem. As shown before, the problem asks for the hermit crab lengths. It has a stem and leaf plot. I went ahead and separated each of the ones by orange lines to separate the data. Now sometimes we're going to have a key, which in this case it says key, the tens, the horizontal line, rep line represents the line between the stem and the leaf. So 225 is equal to 2.25 inches. So this line in this case is going to mean that this is a decimal point separating each point. So based on this data, let's go ahead and look at one. We have a one in the tens and a 25. We know that one 25 is equal to 1.25. One 50, one point five zero or 150. 75 is 1.75. So that is going to take care of our one. Next, let's go ahead and move on to this two. Same way, this is going to be the decimal point separated by one, two, three, four different terms. So we know that we're going to have a total of four separate numbers. 
So we read this as 2.25. Another one, 2.25. Let's go ahead and cross out as we go. Next we have a 2.5 or 2.50 and another 2.50. Okay, same thing, we're going to move on to three. So we have 3.50. Three points, seven five, and another three points, seven five. Finally, let's go down four. Four we have four point two five, and four point two five. Okay, so once all this information is read, let's go ahead and look back at the question. The question is going to have which line plot represents the data in the stem and leaf plot. So based on these numbers that we wrote on the side in left and blue, we're going to take a look at a line plot to show these numbers. Based on the numbers that we got from the star practice example, we're still on that same problem, but we have these stem and leaf numbers after we converted, I just went ahead and rewrote them all down here. Now we know that a couple have two of the same numbers, so we need to make sure and plot that twice. So let's go ahead and see 1.25. We have our scale here, the horizontal line, and in each, in between each whole number, we have cut into fourths because we know that 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.75 are going to be quarters, just as like a quarter and a dollar. So first, we're going to, let's use a different color. We have the first number being 1.25, so we go 1, we know that 0.25 is equal to 1 fourth based on your conversions, so let's go ahead and put an X on 1.25. 1 1.5 is right in between 1 and 2, so it's going to be right there. 1.75 is going to be in between 1.5 1, in between 1 and 2, so again, an X. Now we have two 2.25s. So we know that 2 is right here, 0.25 is right here, and we're going to do two X's. Same with 2.5, two X's. 3.5 is just one. There's one 3.5, so it's just going to be one 3.5. 3.75. We have Once we've constructed our, we've got our line plot, let's go ahead and look back at that answer choice on our star test, and we see that the answer that matches this right here is going to be G. So let's look at G. That's exactly is marked up here. So we know that that's going to be our answer, and therefore we'll get that right on the star test. So good job to all of you guys. Okay, so now that we've gone over the every information about each graph, as well as what we might see on a STAR exam, let's go ahead and review some key points that we learned throughout this lesson. So make sure this is done. If y'all have any questions, I just comment below and I will be sure and answer you all. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a great day.